Hey everybody, this is a quick recap of Springs, Hooke's Law, and Spring Potential Energy, and then some, uh, then some conservation of energy problems that also involve spring potential energy. Okay, just as a recap, springs pull back when you stretch them. And the force that they pull back with is proportional to their displacement. The equation is force equals negative k delta x, where k is the spring constant, delta x is the displacement. This is called Hooke's Law. The spring force is conservative, which means it conserves energy, and it always tries to pull the object back to the equilibrium position, um, whether you extend it or compress it. For this reason, the spring force is called a restoring force because it's always trying to bring the object back to the center. Uh, this is also why we have a negative sign in our spring force equation because when we, up, uh, because when we displace the spring to the right, the force is to the left. So those vectors point in opposite directions. That negative sign accounts for the opposite directions. Elastic potential energy is 1 half k delta x squared. And we get that from the force displacement curve. Uh, because we have elastic potential energy as a type of mechanical energy, we can incorporate into our conservation of energy equations. If there are, is no non-conservative work, then our total mechanical energy at the beginning equals total mechanical energy at the end, which means kinetic, at, kinetic plus gravitational potential plus elastic potential at one point is equal to kinetic plus gravitational potential plus elastic potential energy at another point. So we can use this whenever there is energy conserved with no friction or drag or non-conservative work. If we have non-conservative work, then we just incorporate in this non-conservative work term. It ends up being the same. Total mechanical energy at the beginning plus non-conservative work equals total mechanical energy at the end. The process is exactly the same as if we uh, didn't have elastic potential energy. It's just another different type of energy we're keeping track of. So let's do a practice problem. A 500 gram block is pushed against a spring located on the left-hand side of the track. The spring is compressed 5.20 centimeters from its equilibrium position, and the block is released across a frictionless surface. It then goes over a ledge of height 2.10 meters. Find the speed with which the block hits the ground if the spring constant is 4,480 newtons per meter. So we want to find the speed that the block hits the ground. So we're given information about the compression of the spring, and we want to find things about when it hits the ground. So we're looking at this point and this point. Let's just think about this in terms of energy, uh, since, especially since there's no friction. So first of all, when our spring is fully compressed, our kinetic energy is zero. We have spring potential energy because the spring is compressed, and we have potential energy, or gravitational potential energy, because we are above some height. At the bottom, our gravitational potential energy is zero because we're at the lowest point. Our elastic potential energy is zero because the spring is no longer compressed. But we are moving, so we do have kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is not zero. So if we figure out the energies here, uh, we, we can use conservation of energy to find our unknown speed. Uh, if we can find this kinetic energy at the bottom, we'll be able to then just solve for speed. So let's start by finding our energies at the top. Gravitational potential energy is just mgh, so that's going to be mass, which is 0 0.5 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared times the height, 2.1 meters. Calculator it, 0 0.5 times 9.81 times 2.1, 10.3 joules of energy. Our elastic potential energy is 1 half k delta x squared. 
that's one half times 4,480 newtons per meter times 5.2 centimeters, which is 0 0.052 meters. Plug that into a calculator. Oh, and that distance is squared. 0 0.052 squared times 4480 times 0.5 we get 6.06 .06 joules. So that's actually all the energies we need to calculate. Um, we can use conservation of energy to find this unknown kinetic energy. So we're going to say energy at point 1 equals energy at point 2, which means gravitational potential energy plus elastic potential energy at 1 is equal to kinetic energy at 2 because because we have uh, because we have all these energies that are 0 on these different positions. So we just get 10.3 joules plus 6.06 .06 joules equals kinetic energy at the bottom which is about so K2 is 16.4 joules. And now we just, now that we know the kinetic energy, we just set it up and solve for 1 half mv squared. K2 equals 1 half mv squared. If I solve for v, I get v equals square root of 2k over m, skipping the algebra. 2 times k, this is capital K for kinetic energy, not spring constant. 16.4 joules over our mass, which is 0 0.5. 2 times 16.4 divided by 0 0.5, and take the square root of that. I get a speed of 8.10 meters per second. Nice, easy conservation of energy problem. Okay, next problem. A 65.0 kilogram bungee jumper jumps from a bridge 150 meters high attached to a rope that is 40.0 meters when unstretched. Find the spring constant required for the bungee jumper to safely reach their lowest point when they are 5.00 meters above the ground. So let's start with a sketch. Here's my ground. And I have some bridge. And the bridge is 150 meters high. So we start off on the bridge. There's the rope. And then we jump down and we fall down until we reach the full length of the rope. We're moving down. And then the rope stretches. And it stretches and stretches to its maximum length. And we want it to reach its maximum length when we are 5.00 meters above the ground. So I'm going to just start filling in some, some length values. The height from the bridge to the ground is 150 meters. The length of the unstretched rope is 40 meters. And so we can actually figure out how much the rope stretches. Um, by figuring out this distance here. It's going to be our delta x. And it's equal to, well, it's going to be 150 minus 45, which is 105 meters. Um, OK, so let's also think about the energies that we have. At the very top, we're not stretched, so we have no elastic potential energy. We're not moving, so we have no kinetic energy. All of our energy is gravitational potential. At the bottom, I'm actually going to choose this point to be the lowest point, or to be h equals 0, just to make it easier. 
And uh, at the bottom, we are going to have then, we're not going to have any gravitational potential energy because I'm choosing that height to be zero, five meters above the ground. We're not going to have any kinetic energy because it says we came to a stop. So the only type of energy we're going to have is elastic potential energy. So we can then set up conservation of energy and, uh, and figure out, uh, and we can use that to figure out our potential energy at the bottom. We can use that to figure out the spring constant. So let's start solving. If my h is 0 at 5 meters above the ground, and when I start, I'm 145 meters above the ground. So UG is MGH, which is the mass, 65.0 kilograms, times G, 9.81 meters per second squared, times the height, 145 meters. 65 times 9.81 times 145 gives me 90. 2.5 thousand joules, kilojoules of energy. So, while we have all but one energy, we can use conservation of energy to solve for our unknown. Gravitational potential energy at the top is just equal to, it's just equal to, sorry about that, it's just equal to elastic potential energy at the bottom. So our elastic potential energy is also 92.5 thousand kilojoules, 92,500 joules. And we can set that equal to our equation, 1 half kx squared. And we know that we're stretched by 105 meters. So our delta x is 105 meters squared. Multiply both sides by 2. Divide both sides by 105, we get K equals 92,500 joules times 2 over 105 squared. My units are a little sloppy right here, but the numbers are correct. 92,500 times 2 divided by 105 squared. We get 16.8 newtons per meter as our spring constant. Not that strong of a rope required because it's a large falling distance. Okay, last problem. The ball launcher in a pinball machine has a spring that has a force constant of 1.5 newtons per centimeter. The surface on which the ball moves is inclined 10.6 degrees with respect to the horizontal. If the spring is initially compressed 3.13 centimeters, find the launching speed of a 0.154 kilogram ball when the plunger is released. The acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. The friction and the mass of the plunger are negligible. So, um, again, this is going to be a conservation of energy equation. Before we launch, we have no kinetic energy. We are at a lowest point, so I'm going to say our gravitational potential energy is zero at that point, which means all of our energy is spring potential energy, UE, for our elastic potential. Right after we launch, well, our spring is fully relaxed, so our elastic potential energy is zero. But we did get a little bit higher. We do have some gravitational potential energy and we do have some kinetic energy. So let's fill in the energies that we, uh, we can find. And let's solve for our unknowns, which is going to be K2, to find the speed. Elastic potential energy is 1 half K delta X squared. We know the force constant is 1.5 newtons per centimeter. Um, which means it's going to be 150 newtons per meter. 1.5 newtons each centimeter. 100 of those is 150 newtons. Times, I've got the 1 half. And our delta x is 3.13 centimeters, which is 
0, 3, 1, 3 meters. That whole thing squared. So 0. 0.5 times uh, 150 times 0. 0.0313 squared. So the energy stored is 0. 0.0735 joules. Now, if we want to find the kinetic energy, we're going to need the gravitational potential energy. So we're going to need to find the change in height. We know that it's at an angle of 10.6 degrees. And we know that during the launch, it goes 3.13 centimeters. So we just need to find the vertical component of this, h. It's a right triangle. Um, so the since uh, since this vertical component is the opposite leg, it's going to be um, it's going to be sine. H is three point one three centimeters, sine of ten point six degrees. H equals. zero point five seven six centimeters so we can then solve for our gravitational potential energy after we launched mgh which is our mass is zero point one five four kilograms g is nine point eight meters per second squared and I'm running out of room but our height is going to be it's 0.576 centimeters, which means it's 0 0.00576 meters. I'm going to go on to the next line. So our UG at point 2 is 0 0.00869 joules. So not a whole lot of energy. Our only unknown is K2. Let's solve it using conservation of energy. E1 equals E2. So at the beginning we just had our elastic potential energy at 1. At the end we have our gravitational potential energy at 2 plus our kinetic energy at 2. Elastic potential energy at 1 is 0 0.0735 joules equals 0 0.00869 joules plus K2. So we subtract off that 0 0.00869 from both sides to get K2. We get 0 0.0648 joules of energy. And now we just solve uh, for uh, V in the kinetic energy equation. Skipping the algebra, because we solved this so many times, V equals root 2 K over M, which means it's root 2 times 0 0.0648 joules over the mass 0 0.154 kilograms. I get 0 0.917 meters per second as our launch speed. Uh, so that is conservation of energy problems with spring potential energy. Hope that's helpful. Bye.